What if I told you a single HTML tag could quietly reroute a user's CSS, JavaScript, images, and even their form submissions to a server that we control, all without any cross-site scripting? Today, we're going to break down base tag injection, what it is, how it works, and we'll run through a lab where one review turns our cheese shop into a data exfiltration machine. We'll see resources loaded from an origin that we control and watch a perfectly normal form post straight to the wrong server, all because of one line of HTML. If you enjoy the video, then don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's dive in. The base HTML tag tells the browser where to resolve all relative URLs in the page, so things like images, CSS, JavaScript, and even form actions. If we can inject one into a page, we can quietly reroute resource loads or form submissions to our own domain. Now, techniques like HTML injection are often overlooked, but when we can't get full cross-site scripting, it can still be a powerful attack vector. Let's take a look at the lab. So let's take a quick look at this lab. And here we're just going to npm start so that it's up and running. And we're going to pop open localhost. And in fact, what we're going to do instead of that is we're just going to pull up Burp Suite so we can have a look at the proxy traffic and really understand what's going on under the hood. All right, so here we are at the cheese shop. And first, what we're going to do is just briefly explore the application. We can come into and view a cheese. The picture doesn't look like cheddar to me, but that's fine. And then we can leave reviews here. So this here is our injection point. Point. And what I want to actually look at first quickly is if we come into developer tools and then network and then we just do a quick refresh like this and we come down to like bootstrap for example we can see here in the headers that this is where it's grabbing bootstrap from and then if we come to bootstrap.bundle.min.js we can see that it's coming from here now usually in applications what it's going to do is it's going to grab these from a cdn or some other place but most applications will also have some local files or there might be a local style sheet that just adds some tweaks and things Things. There might be some local JavaScript. So you probably would see Bootstrap going out to a CDN, but in this case, I've just been lazy and I've just popped it on the local server. But of course, there are always lots and lots of files. For example, this image that is probably hosted locally um, rather than in a CDN. You'll always find stuff coming from the web server. So let's have a quick look at this injection point here. And what we're gonna do is just quickly fuzz it for XSS first. So if we grab the post and then hit control I, so send to intruder. And then what we can do is we can just mark this, come to payloads, and then use this XSS list, which is not very comprehensive, but it's good for a quick demo. And obviously it's sent a bunch of things here. And then if we come back to here, we can just refresh to see whether we got cross-site scripting and we didn't, so this didn't work. Let's take a quick look at the filter then before we move on. So this is the application. And if we come down somewhere, this is the filter here. So we've got sanitize HTML. And so what I did is I asked ChatGPT to write me an XSS filter, um, a custom one without using like a library or something like this. And this is what it came back with. So here we're stripping out scripts and we're stripping out replace. This looks like on error on mouse over because we have uh, on and then we've got uh, optional spaces around the equals and then some quotes. Yeah, so this is to stop the um, JavaScript events. So like image on error equals X and then, um, sorry, image source on it, source equals X on error equals prompt, open, close parentheses or brackets or whatever people call them, these things here. <laughs> Uh, we're blocking out JavaScript URLs, and then we're also stripping out iframes and things like this. Now, this doesn't look very comprehensive. I suspect if we fuzz this with a slightly better list, which let's just do this quickly and see whether we can get cross-site scripting, uh, we might actually be able to get it. So if I come into here and then uh, if I come into word lists, let's just go with sec lists and then fuzzing XSS human friendly. The JSON Haddock's list is usually pretty good. Let's give this a try. And then we'll just close this. Refresh the page. 
yeah, so the application is not perfect. It is still technically vulnerable to cross-site scripting, even though that's not what we're going for today. But there you go. Let me restart the application so that we don't just get stuck. Okay, 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 chill, chill, chill. There we go. In the ever-evolving field of cybersecurity, practical skills matter. TCM security certifications provide you with realistic lab environments and scenario-based exams. You'll tackle challenges mirroring real-life threats guided by seasoned professionals. Jumpstart your journey at certifications.tcm-sec.com and be the cyber expert the world needs. And we can come back to here. So in this case, let's imagine that we don't have cross-site scripting, but we do have HTML injection. So what we can do is we can um, insert our base tag. So if we do base and then we do href equals and then quote quotes and close. And in here, we're going to put our server. And all I've done is I'm running another web server on port 4000. And here, what we're doing is we're responding to different requests. So if this works, hopefully what will happen is our web application, the cheese shop, will send requests out to um, port 4000 slash CSS slash bootstrap. And all this is gonna do is set some custom CSS. And you can see, yeah, response type text slash CSS. And then this is the content. And if you go to it, we just got attacker and then the POC payload. And then we've got uh, get js slash bootstrap dot bundle dot min dot js and here we're console dot log so to prove that we have execution we can just uh, bootstrap dot bundle dot min dot js executed from localhost 4000 i didn't sleep very well tonight so i can't talk today and then all we're going to do is try and create an element on the page and then here we've got document.body append child this badge that we're creating so we create a new badge and then we set its style and what it is. And also when a review is posted, um, we just respond with thanks for your review. Now in this case, obviously we'd want to style it in the style of the application, or we might try and then throw them to like a login form and see whether we can collect uh, credentials and they haven't noticed the URL changing. But let's take a look at this in action. So if we come to here, I'm just gonna go HTTP slash slash, and we're gonna to go to localhost 4000. And do we need the trailing slash? I'm not sure, let's try it. And so here, what we wanna do is, let's open F12 again and refresh the page. And actually that's not gonna work because this is running on my Proxmox server and it's not running locally. So hold on, let me just reboot this. Okay, so base, href equals, and then we need the IP address because localhost doesn't point anywhere because there's nothing running lo on uh, localhost. And then what we want is 4,000 like this. So let's submit this and there we go. Up in the top right, instantly we see some JavaScript has popped this. And if we come to console, you can see bootstrap.bundle.min.js executed from localhost 4000. And if we come to network, let's do a quick refresh. We can see our JavaScript is being loaded from here instead. And interestingly, I'm not sure why the CSS isn't being loaded from there. There must be something stopping this or something quirky happening. Let's take a quick look at the template. So if we come in here, yeah, we just have a relative path. Not sure why. So the JavaScript is being grabbed from our server, but the CSS isn't. So partially it works. We've got this, we've got code execution here. Well, in the client code execution here with JavaScript. And then hopefully when we post a form saying, I really need more cheese, please implement same day delivery submit this review and then we get thanks for your review but here you can see that we've actually landed on our server once again so we're running on port 4000 and that's it so that's base tag injection and that's how we can spin up a server and then have our target load resources from our server and of course what we can do is reroute things like form submissions etc etc so this is quite a powerful technique when 
we have injection or HTML injection, but we don't have cross-site scripting. So if you ever inject into a form and you know you get something like test like this, because this is usually how I test for cross-site scripting. I need to reset the server, hold on. Let's remove that and then refresh the page and then so here we have HTML injection, and then usually we try and escalate this to cross-site scripting. If that's not possible, we might be able to do things like base tag injection. So keep an eye out for that if you're not able to get XSS in your targets. So that's it for this video, a simple tag with pretty severe consequences. Base tag injection turns HTML into resource and data hijacking with no JavaScript execution required. If you enjoyed the video, then again, don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, we have the usual Discord server and live streams every Wednesday, so you can check those out if you're interested. Catch you next time.